Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, uh, co-founder and CEO of RackN, with a really cool video. I say that every single time. I'm always excited about our features. In this case, it's it's amazingly cool uh, because what we've done is we've created a plugin, which is a digital rebar extension. It's a RackN uh, plugin that creates a pooling capability. So cloud-like, give me a server, I'm done with my server, reset it capabilities, uh, single API. So if you've seen like our Terraform plugin or something, or Terraform uh, provider, or something like that, where you can get a machine and take it away, that had to do all the pooling itself. In this case, the Digital Rebar API itself is extended to provide this cloud-like pooling behavior and then combine that with image-based deployments. And you can literally say, give me a machine with this image on it and then walk away and let it go through its process. Uh, and then when you're done with the machine, you can just say, return it, and it'll reset it back to the way it was. And you can create a true bare metal cloud with these two plugins. Um, and then get all the other benefits that you have from control, transparencies, events, uh, logging, and aggregation that you would have uh, out of Digital Rebar. Uh, so super powerful bare metal cloud capabilities. I'm going to show you uh, sort of the basics. In this case, I've got, uh, there, we've extended the overview panel to have a machine pool. Uh, you always have a default pool. I'll show you how to add a new pool uh, as we go. But I've made I have these four machines in the system. This is just my standard Kubernetes cluster machine, and they're they're all just in the discover, wait, sledgehammer uh, environment. And so I just rebooted these machines. They should be in a in a good, clean state. And I've been playing a little bit. But let me walk you through these these steps, these processes one at a time. All right, so. If I start with DRP CLI, and, and the, the UX here is read-only, because the goal is to be able to show you how to do this uh, from a command line, right? If, if we're really talking about a pool, you don't want uh, to be doing a lot of UX clicky-click. You're trying to hook this into something else, right? A Terraform or a, some type of, of cloud automation platform, or maybe you've got a CICD pla platform. The goal here is single command, give me a machine or machines, when I'm done, return them. So DRP CLI, uh, of course, you can do everything with API because CLI is just an extension of that. And if I say system actions, it's going to give me a list of uh, these plugins. It'll give me a list of all the system actions. Remember, plugins can act on individual things like machines, like an IPMI reboot action, or at the system level. So in this case, we've extended the system actions, actually API extensions, to be able to add machines to a pool, allocate machines. So that's actually, I want to reserve a machine. We'll show you how that works. If you look at this, it has a whole bunch of options. So it needs the name of the pool, but you can specify count. Uh, if you want to say, hey, if you don't have all the machines, if I ask for 100 and you give me 30, you can filter. So you only get machines that match a, pro, a certain type. A new profile starts it down a path. So that's a workflow. Start my workflow. I can add profiles, remove them. Uh, wait for stages so I can pause until it's completed or reached a certain point in the workflow. So there's a lot of powerful options. I can do things like list the pools. Um, I can, these are the machines in the pool. This is the, the pools themselves. I'll show you how that stuff works. Um, if I remove machines, removing is different than returning. Removing says I'm, I'm taking machines out of a pool. So add and remove from a machine from a pool. Returning machines is when I'm done with them. I want to deallocate them. Uh, and it has the same basic items as allocating. So I'm going to take you through a couple of these actions. Uh, so if I say pool, pools, oops, pool, pools. Uh, yep. And I'm typing it wrong, which is frustrating. Oh, sorry. I'm not typing it wrong at all. What I'm doing is I'm using my commands wrong. So uh, I want to say DRP system CLI run action pool pools. So in this case, what that's going to do is it runs the action on the endpoint. If I say pool uh, list, which is asking me for the machines, then I need to provide it with the pool name that I want the list of. In this case, default is my only pool. And in that case, it's going to give me the machines that are in the pool and some status data about them. So I can actually use that data to see how full my pool is or not. Um, there's some other actions related to that, which is pretty handy, and, and, and that's awesome. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to allocate some machines out of this pool. So I have four available. I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to just scroll back in, and I'll, I'll take you through what this looks like. Here it is. 
So if I'm going to system run action pool allocate machines, so that's give me machines from the default pool right here. I'm going to say my new workflow is my crib live cluster. So I'm actually going to build a Kubernetes cluster and I'm going to take two machines to do that. So pretty straightforward. And when I do that, you're going to see it automatically. The UX uh, is tied into the event system. So it automatically refreshed and showed me those two machines going over. Um, the thing that is also going on now is those machines are also going through. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, you can see the activity. They're going through workflows. So I get live updates of the stages as the systems are going through this provisioning operation. I didn't tell it to wait, so my call returned right away. If I told it to wait for a state, then it would um, block until it had reached the desired state. So in this case, I now have uh, my infrastructure going through and putting the systems into that uh, new allocation state pool, which is pretty, pretty handy for that. Um, and when they're done, I'll show you how to return them. Um, one of the things that we can do is we could actually create a new pool. So we could put these machines into a new pool. Let me scroll back up to my actions. Let me just get my GRP CLI system actions list again. And I actually want to add machines to a new pool. So let's go ahead, pool add machines. And uh, we're going to take all the remaining machines, the ones that are available and we're gonna put them in a new pool. So let's try and make that work. Uh, system run action, uh, let's see. I already forgot the name of it. Pool add machines, pool add machines. That shouldn't have been that hard to remember. Pool name over here, uh, we're gonna call it Fred. And then uh, we're gonna say pool all machines, so I'm going to put all, all the machines, which in this case is the available ones. It doesn't, doesn't take the ones that aren't available. And I'm going to say true for that. And you can look up these per, what these parameters are. They're in the docs or they're in the, they're in the system himself. So in this case now, what happened is we actually came back through and you could see, watch in the background. It took these machines and put them into the Fred pool. I'm going to refresh so that we actually get, takes away, uh, the UX bug where it doesn't take away the old ones. So now I've got two machines in the Fred pool. Uh, so that looks pretty good. And I could then run this same action. So if I ran pool allocate machines default, I'm out of machines now. It tells me, hey, there's not enough. Um, but I could come back and say, you know what? I actually want Fred. Fred here. And then you'll see it's going to take the same actions and it's going to try and allocate those machines um, over here. Looks like I need a refresh again. Yep, so it jumped them over here. Ah, okay. So uh, in this case, I have all these machines. I could say, you know what, uh, and now they're going through their process, things like that. Pretty straightforward. So I just created new pools. I just moved machines and pools. I started a workflow. Um, what you'll notice in allocate machines, if I scroll back up here, uh, I can do things, and I pointed this out before, I can add parameters and profiles. So if I have a image-based parameter, um, I could do that. If I only want machines with 10 CPUs in them, or a certain amount of RAM, I can put filters. So super simple, powerful things like that. Now if, what I can do is I can actually go through and now I can um, release those machines, which uh, we would say is return. So I can say return the machines here. Um, and if I do that, I need to give it a new workflow. So this is going to tell it where I want those machines to end up, uh, right? Which in most places for us is discover. So when I do that, you'll notice the machines in Fred now went back to um, available. If you're watching in the screen behind me up here, woohoo. Um, and so that is basically these pooling operations going back and forth. And this is just a single API call. So allocating and removing, if I want to play the other direction and go back, uh, there's Fred coming back and taking those machines back and forth. Um, now, normally you'd want to block because I'm literally trying to override uh, workflows that are in process and that, that can get a little ugly. Um, so I'm literally bouncing machines. And then if I want to um, remove the machines from this pool, which sounds like a good plan. So I'm removing the machines from Fred. I'm going to take all the machines. The workflow isn't needed in this case, so I'm going to take it away. 
Um, and that's actually removing uh, things back. So they moved back to um, available. I have a UX bug where it's not uh, doing that. So now that pool is actually completely gone since I have no machines in it. Um, pretty straightforward. And literally in this short video, I have taken you through the pooling actions. Uh, super easy to add um, and install. Uh, the APIs backing this pretty much match these actions. Um, and the UX is here to help you watch how things are going so you can track uh, pooling uh, operations yourself in real time and, and sort of play with it and make, make sure everything's uh, operating the way you expect. If this is interesting, please, please contact uh, RackN. Uh, you can sign up for our Slack and our community. You can send uh, me email, rob at RackN or info at RackN. Um, this is exactly the type of functionality that, that we see as critical to really building robust, scalable data centers, really taking uh, bare metal into cloud if you want to think about it that way, or even beyond cloud, because of these, these capabilities are super powerful. Uh, and we would love to be uh, working with you in helping revolutionize your own data center. It's Rob Hirschfeld, signing out.